Hi there, my name is Roger Pillamer and I am an orthopaedic surgeon with a particular interest in impairment assessment. What I would like to discuss is the importance of the medial hamstring reflex in testing for L5 radiculopathy. This reflex is written up in the literature but for some reason rarely used in clinical practice. In fact, in over 40 years of reading medical and medical legal reports, I've never seen a reference to this reflex. What I would like to do in this talk is to demonstrate a method of testing for the medial hamstring reflex and to stress the importance and value of this reflex in testing for L5 radiculopathy. As you will be aware, the L5 nerve root supplies sensation of the anterolateral aspect of the leg as well as the dorsum of the foot extending towards the big toe. It also supplies motor power to the extensors of the toes and one tests for extension of the big toe. I'm going to show you videos of two patients with L5 nerve root lesions with a depressed or absent medial hamstring reflex. This then is a recording of a patient with an L5 nerve root lesion on the left side, normal straight leg raising on the right side, on the left side restricted to about 40 degrees, flexing the knee then allows further hip flexion to occur. Testing his reflexes. Very brisk. Knee reflexes, L4. Ankle reflexes, S1. And I find this the best way of testing ankle reflexes. Medial hamstring reflex on the right. Again, brisk. And on the left, either absent or very depressed. Now, testing for motor power, uh, weakness of extension of the big toe, and sensory testing showed hyposthesia in the L5 distribution on the left side. Uh, this then is just a close-up, same patient showing the brisk reflex, medial hamstring on the right side, L5, and the depressed or absent reflex on the left side. And this is another patient again with an L5 nerve root lesion on the left, brisk knee jerks, brisk knee jerks, uh, brisk ankle jerks, uh, not the best positioning, positive ankle jerks, medial hamstring on the right, brisk, and depressed or absent on the left, and sensory and motor changes in keeping with the L5 nerve root lesion. In summary then, I would like to again stress the importance of testing for the medial hamstring reflex as a valuable clinical sign of L5 nerve root involvement. I have discussed radiculopathy in more detail, as well as a number of other clinical signs and items of interest in my YouTube series. Click on the link below. Stay well.